density. Density is probably the most important principle within Earth science. Fortunately, it's not all that difficult, but density is actually, or actually differences in density, are what created the layers of the Earth. It's what causes earthquakes and volcanoes. It's what churns the ocean, and it's what runs our weather. So you really need to make sure you understand it. Fortunately, like I said, it's not that difficult if you look at it the right way. First, you've got to think, I love density. Love. Have a heart. Put a little line through it, and that gives you the formula. Kind of corny, I know, but it works. We've got an M up at the top here. M for mass. And we've got a V at the bottom. V for volume. Mass divided by volume is density. Okay? Density is how much mass is in a volume. I like to think of it as how tightly packed a material is. Now, units, always important in science. Mass, the units are grams. For volume, the units are either milliliters, usually we use it for, for liquids, or cubic centimeters, which is typically what we use for solids. However, they are interchangeable. They are actually the same amount of space. So we can use either one. So if mass is grams and volume is milliliters or cubic centimeters, we do density, mass divided by volume, you divide the units too. Grams divided by milliliters. Grams divided by milliliters or grams divided by cubic centimeters. Those are the units we're going to be dealing with today. Now density is an invisible characteristic of a substance. So we're going to try and make the invisible visible. We're going to call these dots a gram. Each dot is going to be one gram of material. And each of these squares we're going to pretend is a milliliter. So in this first picture, you can see inside every one of these black squares, in every single milliliter, there is one green dot. That gives us one gram per milliliter. One gram per milliliter. All right. Over here, we have two dots in each square. That's two grams per milliliter. Visual representation of the concept. Notice the one on the left is less tightly packed together than the one on the right. Uh, density, when you get down to it, is how tightly packed material is. So the more tightly packed material is this one right here, two grams per milliliter. If you just think of density as how tightly packed a material is, that'll really help you understand it. All right, here we have three different materials. Each one, we've got mass and the volume. So let's count them up. Here we've got water. The mass of this is 16 grams, and the volume is 16 milliliters. 16 divided by 16, as you should know, something, oops, helps if I type it properly. 16 divided by 16, as you should know, is always one. Something divided by self is one. So the density of water is one gram per milliliter. That is something you need to make sure you remember. It's a key constant in science, and um, you will need to remember that later. Here we have limestone. We have 40 grams in 16 milliliters. Notice it's more tightly packed together. So as we expect, the density is greater than that of water. Limestone is more dense than the water. Okay? You can see that in the picture, but also you'd feel that in your hand. If you hold equal volumes of these two materials, the limestone has more mass in it, more material, so it's going to feel heavier. This one over here, you can tell, is going to be much more dense, so it's going to feel heavier in your hand. We have a mass of 308, and divided by the 16 squares, 19.25. So gold has a density of 19.25 grams per milliliter. That's why in movies gold is always really heavy. You see them struggling with the gold bricks. 
Now, one unique, uh, one thing to remember is that density of material is constant. Unless you're acting upon it with heat or pressure, the density of material will always be the same. Gold, 19.25. Pure water, 1. Period. It doesn't change. So, let's test that out. We've got an object here. It has a density of 1, 1 gram per milliliter. If I put another piece next to it, has the density changed? No. How about another? Nope. How about another? Nope. Nope. No matter what I do, when you add more pieces, the density stays the same. The number of green dots divided by the number of squares, if you wanted to take the time and add it all up, double check me, I promise you, it'll work. The density stays the same, whether you've got a single drop of water or the whole swimming pool. What happens when you remove pieces? Same, same, same. Same, same, same. Density stays the same. What about pressure? Here we have a plunger with some material inside it. Notice the density again, for simplicity's sake, is one gram per milliliter. And I'm going to push down on this sucker, squeeze it. Now, I have less volume. Originally, I took up 16 squares. Now, if you count, I only have 8. So my volume has decreased. How tightly packed is it? Notice we have 2 grams now shoved inside each of these milliliters. So my density has increased as well. So when you increase the pressure, the density increases. Should make sense. You've got more shoved into less space. Well, all right. Now, what about when I release the pressure and stretch it out? All right. Notice that now instead of 16, I have 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28 milliliters. So my volume has increased. And now I only have one of these for every other milliliter. So my density has decreased. So when we change the pressure, this pressure increases, density increases. As pressure decreases, density decreases. This is a direct relationship. As one goes up, so does the other. Now, what about temperature? I'm going to put a Bunsen burner underneath this. When you heat something, what happens to the volume? You should remember, when you heat something, it expands. So what used to be one big box here is now fitting into what would have been one, two, three, four, probably four boxes. So when you heat something up, the volume increases. Now, the density, it used to have 16 of them inside this yellow space. Now it only has four. So the density decreases. Okay? When you heat something up, the density decreases. I put this back to normal. And now I'm going to stick it in the chiller. When you cool something off, it contracts squeezes together, just like if you put pressure on it. So the volume decreases and the density increases. So when you get down to it, as the temperature increases, density decreases. As the temperature decreases, the density increases. This is an inverse relationship. Temperature and pressure do opposite things. Temperature and density do opposite things. 
as you heat it up, it becomes less dense. So I don't care. I always want to ask that. Differences in density cause movement. Here we have water with a density of one gram per milliliter. If we drop something into the water that is more dense, the material will sink to the bottom. If it has the same density, it'll stay, stay suspended in the water, hang around somewhere nearish the middle. It won't be forced up and it won't be forced down. Less dense materials will float. So let's look here. Limestone, as you can see, has a density of two and a half. We drop it in something with a density of one and plop, sinks to the bottom. Gold, it's more dense than the water. Has more of these dots per square than the water does. So plink, it's gonna settle to the bottom. And it'll probably settle faster than limestone did, in fact, because it's so much more dense. Water has a density of one. So we drop it in water and it just stays there. It just hangs out. It's suspended. Ice, density of 0.9. Drop this in. It's less dense than the water. So it will float. Okay. But it's very close to the water, so it's not going to be floating on top. Next, we have styrofoam. It has a density of 0 0.1. When we drop this into the water, it is going to float. Another thing to realize is, since this is so much less dense than the water, it's going to float higher than the ice will. The less dense a material is, the higher it will float. The more dense it is, the deeper it will sink. Right? It's just usually you've got a bottom uh, that kind of blocks it from going further. But yes, the styrofoam will float higher than the ice will. Wood, density of about a half, it's going to float somewhere in between styrofoam and ice. So you can look at an object and tell by how much of it is above the water, how much more of it floats than sinks, tells you comparatively what the density is. We call that specific gravity, but we'll get into that later. All right. So liquids can have different densities too. So if we poured them all into this graduated cylinder, what order would they float? should pause it and try and figure out, and then I'll tell you the answer. Alright, sulfuric acid is the most dense, so it would sink to the bottom. Okay. The next in density is the water, so it would float above that. Next in density is the corn oil, so it would float above that. And the gasoline is the least dense, so it would float on top. Probably should have carried over those boxes, but I didn't bother. All right. So you can see now the proper order. Most dense at the bottom, least dense on top. Why do we care? Getting back to earth science. This is what actually causes our earthquakes. The core is extremely hot leftover heat from formation of the earth and we actually have a lot of radioactive material down there so we believe that it is also sort of like a little nuclear power plant heating up the area above it. Some places are going to be hotter than others so it heats up the mantle. That heated material becomes less dense and rises the same way a hot air balloon rises. Rises up towards the crust. Sometimes pew, pops through when we get little volcanoes or big volcanoes. Other times it just moves to the side. And as it moves to the side, it pulls the crust along with it. And this is what causes our continents to move. You now originally, oh, oh, not originally, but a while back we had a supercontinent called Pangaea, all of the continents together into one lump. And since then they have moved apart. This is what's driving that, part of what's driving that. And as it moves along, it drags the crust, and it also loses heat. It cools off. Eventually it sinks, and it produces these currents called convection cells. And that is what creates 
plate tectonics. It's what runs our earthquakes and volcanoes. Um, and this is also, in our atmosphere, what creates our weather. So it's very important to understand.